Okay, so to be honest, I don't even know if I'm ready for this, but this is something I feel that has to be said. So uh, let's be serious for a moment, and then we can joke and laugh together after this. I wanted to first talk about the MBTI communities in general because it seems like a perfect segue into me talking about the underlying anxiety that I feel about making content in regards to 16 personalities and cognitive functions. And so we'll start with this unconscious consensus among everyone who's into this. There are 16 types with variations therein. This much is painfully obvious to us typical people, but I wanted to share my thoughts on its implications. Communities are naturally cultivated on the basis of common type, among other similarities and experiences. And the more people gather around a specific type, the larger the type community and the stronger the social cohesion. Fast forward and I think this is why you see a whole bunch of like stereotypical memes, motivational videos, shoutouts, and intellectual discussion within the same type and between different types. I think one of the best things that emerged from all this is the additional outlet for communication and harmony between different people. And it's all well and good, but you're probably wondering to yourself, wait a minute, I'm getting positive vibes from this. I thought you said you felt anxiety. Okay, yes, yes, I'll get to that in a minute. Just let me set this up. <clears throat> So let's talk about the second half of the sentence, with variations therein. It seems to me that there's just this lingering ancient tribal disposition within each group that demands consensus to ensure stability and identity, which is understandable, but a major part of that consensus, perhaps its consequence, in my observation, is that generally people will talk about certain things that resemble somewhat to the stereotype of that type, and the sentiment sort of just stays there. In addition, when we observe a conversation about MBTI or cognitive functions between two people from two different types, and let's be honest, I worded it that way because what layperson out of the Jungian typology community is going to talk about this? You know, it's, it's just us bumbo dumbos. It implies that each person has a good idea of their respective type so that the conversation is as substantial as possible. Now, without beating around the bush any further, there lies two sources of my anxiety. And from that, there lies two lingering questions in my mind. First of all, what about the individual? And second, am I really an INFJ? In this video, I'm gonna attempt to answer these two questions, and I am willing to put myself in the hot seat to answer them as honestly as I can. When I say this is going to be a pivotal moment for this channel, I'm definitely exaggerating, and I might be a theatrical diva about it, and uh, it, it might have no bearing on the rest of the world, and I might just be cutting a promo, but uh, you know, I, I don't know. But this is going to be a good one, and you do not want to miss a second of it. So. Let's get on with the video. What? I spent like 12 hours learning After Effects, it's pretty cool. <laughs> so let's talk about individuality first before I talk about my story. Well, even before that, we need to mention our great granddad, Carl Jung. So I've been reading through Psychological Types, this freaking 500 page behemoth. And my impression so far after reading the first chapter and going a little bit further than that, is that this man seeks to reconcile opposite and often conflicting natures within and outside ourselves. And he does so by assessing two clashing schools of thought and the historical figures that represent them, 
as well as the historical figures who seek to reconcile their conflict. One of the things that really stood out to me was the dynamic between what your natural predispositions are, you know, what your strengths are, what you specialize in, if you will, and what society will reward you for. To put it in other words, and to simplify again, if you lead your life with your dominant function or your conscious cognitive stack, you'll be rewarded by a part of society that requires the help from someone who has that. And it's all well and good, and it does help the societies we live in grow and maintain and stabilize itself. The thing is, is that if we lean too much on our strengths, if we lean too hard on our dominant function, we run the risk of weakening the other functions that are just as important and consequential to our well-being. Then we'll run into problems that require use of the function that we haven't developed yet, we go into phases where we second-guess ourselves, we retreat to the things we know, and then our natural tendency to internalize our perceptions lead us into identifying ourselves as a mere portion of our potential. So what does that look like on a grand scale? The first thing that comes to mind is, well, it's actually kind of fun, you know? Sometimes you just have to laugh at yourself and your imperfections. You see a bunch of people bumping into things, you see some people being really awkward, some people will just sit at the corner of the room during a party, some people will hurt other people's feelings without knowing why. Some people will just have resting bitch faces, but then when you actually talk to them, they turn out to be the sweetest people you've ever met. Some people will have a thirst for world domination. And some people will perform jackass stunts and be stung by bees a million times. I mean, it's, it's really engaging. But the second thing that comes to mind is that, do you notice how people will identify themselves as their occupation or their ethnicity or a fan of their favorite sports team or in this case, their personality type. You notice how sometimes when you want to make a certain point, you'll start off by saying, as a insert group name followed by whatever you have to say. And for the record, I'm not really criticizing it. I'm merely stating it as a notable observation. I mean, I catch myself doing that a hell of a lot too. I guess what I'm trying to say is that when you do that, you will appeal to a larger audience, but you will also compromise on your own individuality. When I see people on MBTI forums or on YouTube channels, they will definitely support each other, and I love seeing that happen. However, I do notice that the sentiment just stays there, and the memes and the jokes and the videos reinforce that, and I'm left with this lingering feeling that says, you know, I, I don't know if this goes far enough. I just think that in the process of self-improvement, you also want to be on the path to building your own identity as well. You want to start with an accurate as you can assessment of your type, and then you want to improve on the functions that seem less natural to you. And then once you do that, it's kind of a superpower. It comes with this weird task of getting used to holding a lot of paradoxes and seemingly contradictory thoughts and emotions, but that's sort of the quirk that comes with individuality. And with that said, the best type is every type and no type at the same time. And as I got older, I got more used to the conflicting thoughts and emotions in my mind and recognized that these are just essences that appear and disappear. And then I realized the relationship between these thoughts and emotions are not so contradictory. They seem to me to be more paradoxical and even homeostatic. Once I understood that, I thought to myself, oh, that's what I've been missing the entire time. So yeah, my closing thoughts on this topic is that I consider myself an individual first and as a member of whatever social norm I'm in, a close second. But ideally, I want to embody a homeostatic dynamic between the two identities. It will probably take my whole lifetime to embrace that personal paradigm. So then the question becomes, why do I talk about cognitive types? Well, that's a very good question, and I have a few answers for it. For one, cognitive types are really fun to talk about. It's like the jock, the nerd, the goth, the prom queen, the quiet kid, and everybody else in between just became close friends because they were going through an identity crisis together. It's a really interesting topic, and it makes for a really cool conversation. So much so that number two, when I want to inform myself about it and share it with you, I figured I would try to be as true to Carl Jung's work as much as possible. Because number three, if I share this with people, I want to make sure to the best of my ability that I'm not misinforming them in the process. And I am aware that misinterpretations are going to happen and uh, that's okay. I mean, either you win or you learn. That's why I'm open to people, you know, correcting me or filling in the blanks here. And I think that transitions nicely into my story about the typology session. 
First of all, I've considered myself an INFJ for <laughs> longer than I care to admit. And uh, first I got my INFJ result via the famous or infamous 16 personalities quiz, which I eventually became skeptical of because of the Barnum effect. And then at some point I delved into the cognitive functions because I've always seen those mentioned alongside Myers-Briggs. And I thought those were comparatively more, uh, I don't know, like substantive. So then the next thing I did was watch videos of people who knew about this stuff, like personality hacker, love who? Eric Thor, that's who you love, casual cognition. They're all good channels. Cognitive personality theory was a particularly good one and I'm gonna mention this channel in a second. And that's when I really got intrigued because they elaborated on the functions and their interactions with all the other ones and how that manifested in the person's behavior. And a lot of what they said sounded pretty substantial so I looked into cognitive functions a little bit more. I looked at each of the four functions and their introverted and extroverted variants and then I looked at all of the compositions of the 16 types and then read the descriptions of each one and I narrowed it down to these four. For the audio listeners, that's the INFJ, ENFP, INTJ, and INFP. I picked the INFJ because that was the one I resonated with the most and I felt certain of it and I sort of ran with it. That was my first mistake because when I did that, I really should have continued my study of the cognitive types to confirm that. For some reason, I abruptly stopped. And what I did instead was look into a bunch of INFJ videos and then I compiled a bunch of notes about them on my Word doc. And then that's when I noticed, well, these are all fun to watch, but these are mostly saying the same damn thing. And that's what eventually led me to the rekindling of my channel and then the making of the first INFJ video. Technically the introverted intuition came out first. Wait a minute, my 2021 video came out first. What am I talking about? And then once I started getting a following, it felt pretty good, you know? Some people said it was accurate, some people said it was a breath of fresh air. Um, I think the video with the most dislikes was the INFJ humor one, because I assumed that I pissed off a few Germans for making that one tiny joke about Germans and their sense of humor. First of all, I love Germans, okay? And I don't want you to take that too seriously. A PSA for all the Germans out there, you do have a great sense of humor. Now we're gonna get back to the video. So anyways, the comments and the nice things that were being said about my videos were cool and all, but then this anxiety kept creeping up. The more views these videos got, the more anxious I became. Those ones are popping off? No, no! <clears throat> and then it reached the critical point around the time that I made the working in retail video where I thought to myself, okay, I need to stop there and then make some other content until I figure this thing out because at that point I did feel paranoid that I was misinforming the public. And, uh, and I think it's well worth noting here that in the interest of looking for some understanding, you're going to have to refine your hypothesis, if you will, at the presence of substantial evidence to the contrary. In this case, my hypothesis was, if my interpretation is correct, then I am an INFJ. And I was willing to refine that because I wasn't too sure anymore. As much as the videos resonated with people, as accurate as people said it was, and as convinced that I was of the INFJ type, there was just this nagging feeling that I could be wrong. So what I did was upload some videos about other things that I wanted to talk about. And as a side note, I, I really didn't care about the view count. I was really just, you know, I was really just happy that people watched and had a good time. And in the meantime, I was just brushing up on some more of my knowledge of cognitive functions, but I forgot that I had the IQ of a doorknob. And then finally, I sought the help of a professional. Someone who was steeped into this stuff and really knew what they were talking about. And then I thought to myself, wait a minute, don't some of these YouTubers offer typology sessions? I mean, long story short, I went through some elimination process and decided that Harry Morell of Cognitive Personality Theory was the guy to contact to get professionally typed. And from this point, he will be represented by this picture of his ebook cover. Why? Honestly, because of continuity reasons, I don't know. Like, I I've been represented by emojis and ice cream. My friends have been represented by random pop culture figures. I mean, it, it, it just really made sense to me. By the way, one of my subscribers asked me this question, and I'm paraphrasing here. You know, with all the gurus out there, what makes you think this hairy guy is the guy? What made him stand out to you? Well, I appreciate the question. You see what... <laughs> hairy guy. 
I was subscribed to cognitive personality theory for a while, so there might be a little bit of bias here, but there is something about Harry Morell's videos that indicates that he has some deep, deep credibility here. On the creation of his own system of cognitive functions, he said he obsessively studied the works of Carl Jung himself. He conversed with dozens, maybe even hundreds of people and then typed them accordingly and refined his craft in the process. What's interesting is that several other YouTubers who talk about cognitive functions have given him kudos for his insight into each of the 16 types. And I have read Modern Man in Search of a Soul and I'm currently reading through psychological types and I can tell that yeah, Harry's got his knowledge from first-hand documents, and it manifests in his comment section too. I had to look through his videos to verify this, but his comment section typically consists of people who have 1. struggled with the description of their type and found some clarity, 2. people who have felt very validated and freed from conventional opinion about their type, 3. people who were rather freaked out by how accurate his assessment of their type was, and number four, people who were over the age of 21 who were sexually frustrated because the way he explains his ideas turned them on. I wish I was joking about that last part. So with all that being said, he struck me as someone with merit and credibility, someone who has the humility to refine his theory in the presence of new knowledge and evidence to the contrary, someone who has passion in the subject and a genuine interest in helping people out, and someone who is more than willing to go against the grain of popular opinion to get his ideas out there. I mean, he, he's, <laughs> he's probably blushing right now because I sent him this video. Hey Harry, how's it going? But what really stands out to me is how he factors personal growth, you know, specifically the pathways to what Carl Jung called individuation within his system. It's funny because I also chose to be on a similar path. So I went through his website for service options, and then I emailed him, and then I said something along the lines of, Harry, I'm having an arbitrary crisis over here, and a quarter life crisis, but I don't know if you could help me with that. And it has almost no bearing on the rest of the world, but I'm not even sure if I'm an INFJ anymore. Can you help me? I'll pay for either type 1 or type 2 service. And he was like, yeah, I really appreciate your reaching out to me. How about we start off with type 1 service, and then we can go on from there. Super accommodating guy. So I went to his site again, booked a typing service, and about a week and a service fee later, we did the typing service over Skype. And without going into detail, because of my right to confidentiality, during the session he was very patient, he was very professional, he was very cordial, he took notes while I was talking, and he answered every question that I had with great clarity and precision, with an undertone of experience. He's actually much more relaxed than he is in his videos, which I find, you know, pretty cool, I guess. And then by the end of the session, he said he would come back with a PDF of my type results in 7 to 10 days. So I waited. So I had this friendly exchange with basic MBTI and then she commented, Hello, just wanted to stop by and say that I discovered your video because my audience watches your videos. They are pretty nice and I love your editing style. Although the way you speak sounds more like extroverted intuition to me. And then I told her, that's interesting because when I typed myself, I had a really hard time deciding if I was NE or NI dominant. I kind of stuck with NI because that's what I felt like I was using more. Oh, that makes sense. I scored high on NI and NE as well, which isn't weird at all because reality isn't as clean as tables with numbers. And I thought to myself, you know, she, she really does have a point. It's kind of... Oh, the PDF came in. When Harry Morell sent me the PDF, he gave me the two most likely types that I could be, and then he sent me a pretty detailed assessment of each. All right, so this is the moment of truth. Drum roll. Whoa, 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 wait. What are you doing? Sorry. And my second most likely type is the INFJ. And my most likely type is the ISFJ. What? What? I never considered in my life that I would be an SI Dom. Initially, when I looked at the report, my mind was like a four-year-old that found out that his sneaky raccoon of a grandpa ate the Christmas cookies and not Santa Claus. But then literally a minute and 37 seconds later, I thought to myself, wait a minute, let me look back at my work. So I looked back at my videos and reflected on my processing for said videos and at that moment, it really made sense. The organization of my ideas, 
my heavily reflective and precise nature, my logical progression of thought, my step-by-step -step execution of my story, my meticulous editing, this all screamed SITI way more than NITI, and the realization was under my nose the entire time. And from that moment, it totally changed the way that I viewed cognitive functions, I would argue, for the better. And so what was initially a reluctance to accept the results turned into a full embrace. And I felt this burden finally lift off of my shoulders. So based off all of this, I will say that my new hypothesis is that I am an ISFJ, but due to having been on a path to individuality for a long time, I've picked up on some INFJ habits and tendencies along the way. So on our follow-up call, I thanked Harry Morrell for his time, I asked him some clarifying questions, and then we had a pretty interesting exchange of ideas along the way. And that went pretty well, but then after the video call, I was just left with this sudden and terrifying realization. Like if even half of what we said was true, then we just set fire to 80% of the INFJ subreddit, like the ISFJ forums, and maybe even the ENFP community. Harry, wh what the hell are we doing? So what will I do now moving forward? Am I going to delete my videos? Hell no! I worked too hard on these videos. I'm not gonna delete them. I figured I would just pin a comment to the top and then put a little disclaimer that says something along the lines of, Hey, I got professionally typed as an ISFJ, so take this video with a grain of salt, and then I'm gonna move on to making more videos. I also do plan on making some ISFJ content. I mean, I looked around YouTube and uh, it seems like not many people mention them outside of the people who are really into MBTI and cognitive functions. So I might as well give them some recognition for how cool they are, you know? As for the ramifications of this video, I'm expecting my subscriber count to like <laughs> be cut in half. I'm like expecting the other half to undergo an identity crisis. I'm expecting like tomatoes to be thrown at me via the comment section. Um, I think I'm gonna see a whole bunch of tomato emojis in the comments. And I'm thinking my YouTube friends are gonna start distancing themselves and it's not because of coronavirus. But you know, jokes aside, I do feel a little bit more confident about releasing some videos in the future. And I think that's really it. You know, for the people who made it this far into the video, thank you very much for listening to me ramble. And hopefully this doesn't affect your own journey with cognitive functions and that you take this as a learning experience. And another thanks to Harry Morell of Cognitive Personality Theory. Thanks again for the typing session and by extension helping clear my mind on a lot of things related to this. As a side note, he's the only person who knows what I look like and uh, I think we'll have to keep it that way for a while, yes? On the last note, I am so freaking done with editing this video and I'm going to take a short nap after uploading this and then I'm going to be in the comment section and then I'm going to plan my next video. Alright, I hope you have a great day everyone and uh, take care.